Coming up, it's time to tighten the county's purse strings as the top leaders say budget cuts are ahead. This year's budget includes cuts to almost every county agency except for public safety and the Prince George's County Public School System. Plus, the haze is clearing on Greek life at the University of Maryland. I've got the latest development in the University of Maryland Greek life suspension coming up next on CTV News. And it's time to pick your teams and fill in your brackets. It's March Madness time. All those stories up next on CTV News. Good evening, this is CTV News for Monday, March 18th. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us. Well, last week, County Executive Angela Osserbrooks unveiled her proposed budget for fiscal year 2025. Prince George's, like most jurisdictions across the state, is feeling some belt tightening as it grapples with a major budget shortfall while implementing a new landmark education initiative. Most of our non-public safety agencies are facing cuts. That was how Prince George's County Executive Angela Osserbrooks opened her press conference last Friday, expressing the grim reality of a tough budget for fiscal year 2025. With a projected $171 million budget shortfall, equipment will likely not be replaced, capital projects will be delayed, and most American rescue projects have been canceled outright to close the gap. We froze about 800 positions, um, and then we also took reductions in nearly all of our county agencies except the police department and the school system. Even on the legislative side, we took a cut. Um, I think it was about 1.5 million. Right. We took a cut on our side as well. So it really is a collective effort about how we're sacrificing to get through these tough times. The $5.4 billion budget is a 1% increase over FY 2024. Although most departments face deep cuts, programs for cybersecurity and the digitization of records will go up. There will also be increased funding for mental and behavioral health, as well as for shelters. Several stormwater management and climate programs are also featured, as well as increased funding for litter pickup and street sweeping figuring out ways to bring in new money. Mm -hmm. That's really important. We cannot lose our AAA bond rating. 72% of Prince George's tax revenue is residential and only 28% is commercial. Compare that with Montgomery County, which is nearly the reverse. Both the executive and legislative branches say the key to increasing tax revenue in the county is to increase economic development. That's why the Blue Line Corridor is important. Um, we are going to have project in Chevrolet that we are really excited about. We made investments in New Carrollton. Uh, we are also working to grow companies who are coming here, the Ion Q, um, the, the quantum computing. Also, Brooks says the good news for this budget is that there will be no employee cuts or furloughs and no new taxes. But she expects similar challenges next fiscal year. We'll have to continue to make discipline choices. Um, and to recognize where we are and, and to make those choices now so that we can continue to move forward in the future. We cannot spend money we don't have. And also, Brooks says the new mandatory education plan called Blueprint for Maryland's Future is one of the major cost drivers for Prince George's. Some relief for the students affected by the Greek life suspension at a local university, but revelations of hazing have some students facing more consequences. Maria J Mariah Jalad is at College Park with an update. The suspension of new member activities for Greek life chapters at the University of Maryland has been lifted, and the petition for a temporary restraining order by a group of students against UMD administrators has been withdrawn. If you've been following this story, you'll know that since the beginning of the month, the University of Maryland suspended Greek life activities, but in the latest development on Friday, the university cleared all but five fraternities to return to normal activities. According to court documents, several fraternities on campus reportedly engaged in hazing activities, physical abuse, financial exploitation and forced labor, and drug and alcohol abuse. The university says individual students from those five fraternities will be referred for alleged violations of the student conduct code. 
Maryland Attorney General Anthony Brown said the university was fully authorized to impose restrictions on chapter activities while it investigated serious and persistent allegations of hazing. I reported on Friday that four fraternities and a group of students petitioned for a temporary restraining order naming four UMD administrators and the school saying that the suspension violated their freedom of speech. The day after the university made its filing, the petition was withdrawn. The University of Maryland Maryland says the five fraternities still under investigation will continue to face temporary restrictions until the investigation is closed. Mariah Jalad in College Park, CTV News. And police are investigating a fatal pedestrian hit and run that occurred in Temple Hills on Friday. The victim is 48-year-old Carlos Barrett of Suitland. Police were called to the area of Branch Avenue in Suitland Park later on 915 for a welfare check. Barrett was pronounced dead. Police say at the scene. Anyone with information on the case asked to call police at 301-731-4422. And Prince George's police are also investigating a hit and run in Laurel. Just before 9.30 last night, officers responded to a fatal pedestrian collision near the intersection of Laurel Bowie Road and Conti Road. Officers found one adult male unresponsive. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Anyone with information on the case is asked to call 1-866-411-TIPS. Well, today is what's known as crossover day in the Maryland General Assembly. For a bill to become law, it must be passed by both the House and Senate. During the 90-day session, a measure must be on its way with enough time to be considered by the opposite chamber. There are only three weeks left in the legislative session, so bills must pass the first chamber by March 18th. Historically, most bills that don't clear their chamber of origin by crossover day will not become law. And as lawmakers scramble to move bills from one chamber to another, there are a few measures they're hoping to take action on quickly. One bill would allow fair housing inspectors to use electronic surveillance devices to catch bad actors in the real estate and apartment rental industries. Another bill would allow someone who is currently incarcerated to file a petition to a court to reduce or modify their sentence after serving 20 years behind bars. And Republicans are looking to pass bills that would tighten abortion regulations. They are not expected those bills to pass. A Maryland man is arrested in Prince George's County in connection with a deadly shooting in Annandale, Virginia. It happened Friday evening at about 445 in the 3200 block of Woodburn Road. Investigators say 30-year-old Tylan Jennings blocked his ex-girlfriend's vehicle with his as she was trying to leave work. The victim, 30-year-old Anisha Isaacs, was on the phone at the time with 911 dispatchers when Jennings allegedly opened fire, killing her. Police say Isaacs told dispatchers that she had a protective order against him. Jennings faces numerous charges, including murder. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott. Still to come, county leaders launch a new initiative to keep students safe on the streets. Leaders are calling on the community's help and keeping students safe as they walk home from school. I'm Katera Jones. I'll have all those details coming up on CTV News. We hear the stories of people forced to abandon their home. The stories of people whose dreams have been swept away or their lives left hanging by a thread. Or whose worlds have been blasted apart. Although the stories repeat themselves, each person's experience is unique, as unique as they are. And whether it's care or community that people need, we're here to help them live a new chapter, to embrace what makes them unique, be a lifeline to the most vulnerable. Out, out, everybody out, come on. Good job. Under two minutes. Keep your loved ones safe from home fires. Practice a two-minute drill until it's part of your routine. And test your smoke alarms monthly. 
In America, millions of families are facing hunger. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. Together, we can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. Hoping to ban a ban on books, lawmakers in Annapolis have introduced the Freedom to Read Act. The measure would set a statewide standard for some content in libraries. The bill would also prohibit public schools and libraries from excluding material based on an author's origin, background, or views. Under the legislation, books found to contain sexual content could still be pulled from the shelves. Still, opponents say it would be in the hand, it would uh, tie the hands of local government and county school officials. Currently, nine books have been removed from public schools, libraries in Carroll County. 52 others have also been challenged. County leaders are launching a new pilot program this spring and are calling for the community's help. Officials say the initiative is designed to address the growing concerns of student safety during school di dismissal. CTV's Katira Jones is in Capitol Heights with more. County Council members, along with the Prince George's School Board, announces the launch of its new Safe Passage project. The goal of the pilot program is to help keep students safe as they walk home from school. Now, the initiative will put adult volunteers near six school areas that leaders say have the most issues. Those schools include Largo High School, Suitland High, Charles Flowers High, Blade Burke High, Andrew Jackson Middle, and here at Central High School. Now, leaders say that the volunteers will be trained prior to being placed near a school area. We're going to have a more formal process to have people out on a regular basis, and they're going to be able to keep an eye out, keep the kids from hurting each other, and keep, really, it's worse, adults targeting these children. We have traffic issues, we have issues with um, kids have gotten struck by vehicles that we've seen stories across the county. And like my colleague mentioned, we also have issues with robbery. And then we've all seen the viral videos of fighting, right? And so sometimes we have kids crossing school grounds because they know if we cross the street, then they can fight and no one will go across the street. So we've identified these six different schools. Um, and so what we want to do is look at the data for five years prior to um, when we start April 15th and then we will take that data and see if there has been a dip in activity. Um, and then after we make have the evidence or the uh, information, we can say, okay, this needs to be a fully funded program countywide. So that's our goal. The first training session is set for March 23rd. Volunteers are expected to be out beginning April 15th. Katira Jones, CTV News. And officials say the volunteers would be needed from 2 until 4 p.m. To sign up for the pilot program, you can visit the website on your screen. Well, a Bowie man has been sentenced to life in prison for murder. The suspect is 27-year-old Desmond Emba. Officials say Emba shot the victim, Riyad Aljanabi, while he sat in a car near an apartment complex in Riverdale back in February 2021. Aljanabi was working as a security guard at the building at the time of the incident. He died later at an area hospital. An investigation reveals that Emba shot the victim twice in the face and then stole his car. Well, the Maryland Senate passes legislation that would hold the firearms industry accountable in cases of misconduct that harm Marylanders. Senate Bill 488 would allow civil suits to move forward against so-called bad actors in the gun industry, despite a prior law that passed in 2005 that protected gun manufacturers accused of negligence from being sued. The advocacy organization Moms Demand Action says creating a path to accountability for gun manufacturers and sellers is essential to stopping the legal flow of firearms into the state. And closing the gap, that's what Democrats in Annapolis say their $1.2 billion revenue package will do. Leaders say their proposals will not only pay for the expansion of education funding in Maryland, but also amend the multi-billion dollar projected shortfall in the state's transportation trust fund. That said, there was apprehension in the Senate to pass the plan as lawmakers there continue to reject any new uh, gaming or broad tax increases. According to legislative analysis, the state's deficit is projected to reach $1 billion next year and hit $3 billion in 2028. Governor Westmore has expressed his reluctance to raise taxes. 
After sitting vacant for 17 years, the former Landover Mall site in Prince George's passes a crucial hurdle in launching its second act. Last week, the Prince George's Planning Board approved Learner Enterprises' proposal to develop data centers on the grounds of the old shopping mall. Dubbed the Bright Sea Tech Park Project, it calls for five new data centers comprising more than 4.1 million square feet on an 87-acre site. This location was one of the proposed sites for the new FBI headquarters. And crews worked to repair a broken pipe in the district over the weekend that impacted Mount Rainier. WSSE Water says the break occurred near Rhode Island Avenue and Monroe Street in the district just after 7 a.m. on Sunday. The water from the pipe, which belongs to the D.C. water system, entered into WSSE's water's own sewer system. Officials say about 14,000 gallons of untreated wastewater got into the utility company's storm drain. And still to come on CTV News, a new campus center opening its doors in Largo. Plus, March Madness starts tomorrow, but betters beware. Those stories and more don't go away. We'll be right back. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At 4 in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. He asked all his therapists to help him undertake some of the house chores. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Remember the best planned 90 minutes of your life? Or that surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the gold in planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. We need to go meet the guys. I'm lit. Can you drive? Pool party at Jesse's. Can you drive? Will you drive? I'm a little toasty. Nope. 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 I'm high. But I can order us a ride. Okay. Friendly reminder, don't drive high. If you feel different, you drive different. Thanks for staying with us. Well, the University of Maryland Capital Region Health is celebrating the opening of its new cancer center. The facility, which opens today, is located in the new Center for Advanced Medicine, has 35,000 square feet of space for prevention and screening, diagnos diagnosis and treatment, as well as recovery and palliative care. Now, patients will have their oncologist, nutritionist, social worker, and clinical trial coordinator, as well as radiation treatments, all under one roof. We have all of that under one roof which is very uh, convenient for patients where you're sort of navigating a very fragmented care that's already in place in PG County. Cancer care is best delivered when it meets the patient's needs and it's closer to where they live. So that's what we're trying to do is to mitigate some of the health care disparities that currently exist due to travel outside of the county and have it right here in the heart of Prince George's County. And the new Center for Advanced Medicine also houses several multi-specialty clinics, including women and heart health. Okay, moving on now to sports. You may already have plans for your March Madness bracket, but the Maryland Attorney General is warning fans to be wary of scams. The office says betting sites are venues are, and venues are good for enticing bettors and very good at getting you to bet more money than you plan to spend, all while hoping you won't be reading the fine print. To protect yourself, know the terms and conditions on all sports books and keep in mind that there is no such thing as a completely risk-free bet when it comes to gambling. For more information about legitimate licensed sports betting, available at MD, 
gaming.com. Okay, Mr. Bug, my main man joining us right now with sports. What's happening? <laughs> We're shaking. Hey, everybody. We got a packed sports page lineup for you today. What's up, sports fans? Stay right there because I have some highlights from the high school basketball state championship game between Largo and Carver Vocational Tech. And the Lady Terps make the cut for March Madness. Don't go anywhere. That drives me every day as a dad is him. Every day he's hungry for something. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. It's okay to make mistakes. As long as it's coming from love, then it kind of starts to work itself out. Death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. It's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change because it, it just can't be us. We start the week off with some exciting news from the world of high school basketball. The Largo High School boys basketball squad took the court Saturday afternoon against Carver Vocational Tech High School in the state championship game. Beginning with the first quarter, both teams got off to a rocky start offensively, but the Lions made some nice plays on defense like this block by forward Cam Ward and the sweet rejection by two guard Jalen Johnson. But the Lions' nice defense and the shots they did make, like this one from point guard Aiden Ash, and this and one layup from Ward had the Lions leading 12-9 over the Bears after the quarter. Now to the second quarter, the Lions still struggled to shoot the ball, only shooting 5 for 14. But more plays made on the defensive end, like these two blocks to prevent a bucket, one by point guard Latre Yon, and another one by Ward who had 6 on the day, helped the Bears shoot poorly as well. And the Lions went into halftime up, 25 to 21. Moving on to the third quarter, the Bears often started to come alive, and because of this, they ended up tying the game at 33 all at one point. But the Lions began to shoot better from the floor also, and made buckets like this triple and tough and one layup from Johnson, and also this nice tip-in from combo guard J.R. Mobley helped the Lions stay out in front and go into the fourth, still up 48 to 41. And Largo held on to their lead for the rest of the game, winning it 66-52 and taking home the state championship. Head coach Rodney Ward spoke after the game about how much the team being in the state championship last season helped them come out on top this time around. We um, knew what to do, just a matter of executing. I think in the first half we missed a lot of layups, uh, playing a little bit too fast, but the, the moment's a little different here. And uh, I think just the, the biggest advantage is having been there before, guys actually have played, and you can see a little bit in those guys when they got a little tight. And I, I know that feeling. It, it looked like us a little bit last year at times. And when it happens, nothing you can do. We, 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 we scouted, we studied, we do what they want to do. We just had to execute better just for us finishing, uh, which I think we did in the second half. And Ward, who had 29 points and 16 boards in the matchup, talked about how much this victory meant to him. I mean, ever since last year, like, we were in the same 
area in this same time frame, and we didn't have a smile on our face. So the whole summer, the whole preseason, that was just our goal. Like, we got to get back here and win, and that's what we did. We handled business. We trusted each other. It wasn't always smooth. It's been times where we not always on the same page, but when it came down to it, we are the last team standing. So at the end of the day, we just stay champs. Congratulations to Largo for an absolutely stellar season. And wrapping up sports, the UMD women's basketball team's first opponent in the March Madness tournament was announced over the weekend. The Lady Terps will face off against Iowa State on Friday. This is the Lady Terps' 14th straight season of qualifying for the tournament. And the winner of this game will match up against the winner of Norfolk State versus Stanford. And that is your Monday sports page. So this was a big win for the Lions. Yeah, absolutely, Byron. When I talked to this team back in de December, you could tell that that they were ver very determined and very um, bent, um, really, really determined to get back to, be, to get back to this game. And they they did that. They 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 put, they came out on top. And I also want to give a big shout out to uh, to Lions forward Cam Ward. I mean, he you could tell during the game he had a. He had a different, he bought a, a lot of intensity during the game. Mm -hmm. And 29 mm -hmm. points and 16 boards, it doesn't get any better than that. You may have just answered my question. Was he the one that you think was the standout Absol player? Yeah, absolutely. Like mm -hmm. I said, 29 points, 16 boards, six blocks. He just bought, he, he bought, he definitely bought his A game that day, Patty. It, <laughs> it, it was absolutely um, wonderful to watch for sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, All right. Simon. No problem. Well, uh, now we're going to take a look at our three day weather forecast. Tonight will be mostly cloudy. Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high of 54. Wednesday, clear and sunny with a high of 61, low of 34. Thursday will also be clear and sunny with a high of 49. And for your community calendar, Get Fit Mobile is hosting a kids adventure fit challenge. This high energy session offers a playground of excitement. Created to promote exercise, foster teamwork, and a sense of accomplishment. This free event will be held at West Folly Community Center tomorrow evening at 5 to 6.30. For information, contact 301-516-5300. And that wraps up CTV News for tonight. Thanks for joining us. See you again tomorrow, 4.30. Good night. Good night. This is the story of the American Cancer Society. A proven history of 110 years of wins in advocacy, research, and patient support. The story of how people don't have to face cancer alone. Because for 110 years, we have made significant progress against cancer together. Increasing our chances of survival by championing early detection tools and funding and conducting studies like the one that helped reduce smoking's deadly grip. Providing lifelines through patient support for people with cancer and those who love them. Like a home away from home for free. And helping make real change by raising all our voices to make cancer research a national priority. From day one, we believe that research can save lives. We have been committed to providing unwavering support and we continue to stand up to achieve important policy change because we know that's how we can achieve quality cancer care that's equal for all. We are proud of our wins, but even more proud of the brave people that deal with cancer every day. And of all of you that support, donate, volunteer, and work to make it better for every cancer, every life. Now, let's keep making history together. Let's keep winning until we can end cancer as we know it for everyone. <laughs>